Hello and Mingalaba. Welcome to MI Radio's Myanmar Today. I'm Henry Zin. State Councillor held a video conference with health and social workers from ARD. A report on how Wuhan dealt with first reported COVID-19 cases. The local fish market sees a sharp decrease in sales but the price doesn't rise. A story coverage on foreign trade on Yangon Stock Exchange gaining momentum. All of that on this edition of Myanmar Today, but for now let's take a look at what's happening in local news. State Councillor Don San Suu Kyi, who is also the chairperson of the National Central Committee for COVID-19 Prevention, Control and Treatment, emphasized the importance of protective materials in the containment of the pandemic during a video conference call from the Presidential Palace in Nebido Monday with frontline workers in the Yaudi region. The State Councillor spoke about the need for the public to follow the guidelines and advice of health workers and increasing health awareness campaigns. In this regard, she also spoke about the plans being undertaken by the union government to see to the needs of the people as soon as possible and as much as possible. In her concluding remarks, she pledged the government would help as much as possible to alleviate the worries of the people with regard to food and livelihood issues. She added that it would not be possible to overcome the current problem immediately and that was why it was important to reduce anxiety and stress. She also spoke about the necessity of sufficient protective gear for the personnel of administrative health and humanitarian organizations who were participating in the fight against COVID-19 and the fact that you can help others only if you protect yourself. She also said that suitable accommodations will be arranged for health workers and other staff as soon as possible, that medicines and materials as well as manpower needs will be fulfilled as much as possible, and also that ways and means will be found to ensure that the people would accept with great interest and the health awareness messages regarding the fight against COVID-19. The World Bank said it has approved a 50 million US dollars credit for the Myanmar COVID-19 emergency response project as part of global emergency support operations through a dedicated fast track COVID-19 facility. Mariam Sherman, World Bank country director for Myanmar, Cambodia and Lao PDR in a statement released on Monday by the World Bank's Yangon office said, quote, this fast track financing will help Myanmar fill a critical gap in its contingency plan to urgently increase hospital preparedness and surge capacity in order to reduce the spread of COVID-19, protect health workers and minimize the severity of illness and associated Death. The project primarily focuses on the upscaling of intensive care units at selected hospitals, along with the capacity building of health staff and officials and community engagement activities throughout the country. Eight central level hospitals and 43 region and state level hospitals across all regions and states will be covered, with implementation rolled out in a phased manner, starting with the most at risk areas such as densely populated areas and areas with frequent travel and migration. An official of the Confederation of Trade Unions in Myanmar, Sitam, said workers can make a complaint if they are forced to work during a mandatory inspection period of factories and workplaces. The Ministry of Labor, Immigration and Population in its announcement stated factories and workplaces in the respective industrial zones across the country will undergo mand- mandatory inspection between 20th and 30th of April to resume their operations, in line with the regulations and guidelines on COVID-19 issued by the Ministry of Health and Sports. CTAM Assistant General Secretary Do Pyo Sanaso said, quote, The statement is a move to reduce the spread of COVID-19. If the employers force the employees to come into work during the inspection period, the workers can make a complaint to the respective departments. The CTAM urged the workers engaged in factories and workplaces to file complaints to the factories and general labour laws and inspection department when they are forced to work. A WHO vehicle carrying swaps from the patients receiving COVID-19 quarantine in townships in Rakhine State for the test in Yangon's National Laboratory came under attack on Monday in Mimbia Township, Rakhine State, leaving two staff injured. The two staff, a driver and a health worker, were in the WHO vehicle with number plate UN-5-34 when they were attacked by ULA or AA group near Yamon Bridge in Mimbyat around 5 p.m. while they, are on, they were on the way to Yangon since the airlines were suspended. They were taken to the Mimbyat People's Hospital. The World Health Organization's vehicle was left in the scene and plans are underway to bring it back on Tuesday. 
While the world is combating the COVID-19 global pandemic by preventing containment and treatment of the coronavirus disease, the attack on the WHO vehicle with UN emblem and staff on their global pandemic mission by the ULA or AA group occurred, and the attack reflects the ULA or AA group's inhuman acts. That's all with the local news. Let's take a look at the first report now. The official quarantine period in a government-designated facility will be increased to 21 days from 14 days before. As a way of providing timely updates in the regional level, the video conference call focused on the practical guidelines and support in the prevention and control of COVID-19 in the Yawi region. The state councillor said the sufficient quarantine facilities available is becoming a challenge and the prevention, control and treatment at risk of spreading COVID-19 is a top priority for the government. State Councillor Dong San Suji held a live broadcast conference with health and social workers who are working in the front line of the fight against COVID-19 in ELRI region on 20th April. Dong San Suji, State Councillor, the Republic of the Union of Myanmar, said. The ARD region is populous and the number of overseas workers is really on the rise. Although these people are going back to mother country, Myanmar, there is no positive case tested for the disease in the region till now. The official quarantine period in a government-designated facility will be increased 21 days from 14 days before. Consequently, more facilities are likely to be required to accommodate the new people under investigation. As a way of providing timely updates in regional level, the video conferencing focused on the protocol guidelines and support in prevention and control of COVID-19 in ARD region. Dr. Pula, midwife, Department of Rural Health, near our township, said, our team is taking responsible for about 5,000 people in 16 villages. When we arrange four quarantine centers to keep overseas workers into quarantine, some families lack cooperation. Some people also complain that they have tested but only with inadequate documents. They don't want to be kept into quarantine because of their living difficulties. Wu Saw Win Tonai is an administrator from the Patan group of villages. He discussed. We find difficulties to get the government statement and guidelines to our region in time. It leads us while we are taking the implementation processes. In case of food distribution, we got the government instructions to the administrators in documentation and working class and working class people only the last date morning. The sufficient quarantine facilities available is becoming a challenge and the prevention, control and treatment at risk of spreading COVID-19 is a top priority for the government, said the state councillor. <laughs> As all the countries in the world want the sufficient preventive facilities for COVID-19, and it is really high in demand now, it can be said that we are competing with many other countries to get these preventive facilities in sufficient amount. It looks like we are standing in line at the producing industries. We are managing to get the sufficient amount, and it is getting close. The video conferencing like this let us know how the regional situation is and how and what we can provide. The government is going to provide sufficient facilities in prevention, control and treatment at risk of spreading COVID-19 as long as there is a resource. According to Ministry of Health and Sports, MOHS, the Yango National Health Laboratory tested lab specimen of nearly 4,700 people quarantined until the evening of 20th April. Among them, there are 119 people testing positive for COVID-19. The positive patients are receiving the treatment 
at the 10 hospitals in Tide, Lashu, Molanyai, Tangji, Magui, Zaindo, Kali, and Mendeley. This is news reporting from AMA Radio. I am Pyodi Ridu. That's a report on the video conference call between the state councillor and health and social workers from ARD. All right, we'll carry on with the next report. Confirmed COVID-19 cases have exceeded 2.4 million globally, with a death toll surpassing 160,000, according to the latest data by Johns Hopkins University. With a growing number of confirmed cases and deaths, tracing the very first cases and understanding how authorities in Wuhan coped with the crisis has become increasingly critical. Agajo has the details. While the world is grappling with growing number of confirmed cases and deaths, it is of importance to trace back to the first reported COVID-19 cases. China reported the first seven COVID-19 patients in central China's Wuhan and their profiles provide critical information regarding the origin of the pandemic outbreak. It is also beneficial to learn how the authorities in Wuhan first dealt with the medical report of COVID-19 cases. Ms. Huang Yue, CRI reporter in Wuhan, explained. According to Dr. Zhang Jixian of Hubei Provincial Hospital of Integrated Chinese and Western Medicine, who is held as the first doctor to alert the medical system of the novel coronavirus, she listed how long the first seven patients had displayed a fever and how it processed and their respiratory condition. She showed the record she wrote that one of the first seven patients was hospitalized three days after showing chest congestion and a severe fever that had lasted 10 days. Dr. Chen's report says the sound of breathing in the lungs was labored. A wet, rattling sound could be heard in the left lower lobe. Neither of the patient's legs was swollen. The chest CT scans showed a kind of ground glass opacity. The results of influenza A, H1N1, and B were negative. The five respiratory etiology tests were negative. The patient underwent routine blood tests. The electrocardiography T wave was abnormal. The sinus rhythm was too fast. A lymphocyte subset was performed to examine blood cells and the immune system. It showed the T lymphocyte level was low. The lymphocyte count was also low. Six other people displayed similar symptoms. Dr. Jian Jixian, a Hubei Provincial Hospital of Integrated Chinese and Western Medicine, explained how Wuhan authorities dealt with the first cases. Kandao 还有病情这么严重死了这么多人当初真的没有预计到up until April 20th, data shows that confirmed COVID-19 cases have exceeded 2.4 million globally, with the death toll surpassing 160,000, according to the latest data by the Johns Hopkins University. The total number of cases on the Chinese mainland has reached 82,747, including 100 including 1,583 from abroad. A total of 990 asymptomatic patients are under medical observation. The country's total death toll stands at 4,642. All cities in central China's Hubei province were assessed to be at low epidemic risk on Saturday. 
Spain registered on Sunday a sharp drop in the daily death toll from coronavirus, falling to 410 from 565. In the U.S., over 40,000 deaths have been reported, and total confirmed cases have surpassed 755,000, meaning the U.S. has the largest number of both coronavirus fatalities and infections in the world. This is Aga Jo reporting for Myanmar International Radio. Stay with us as we bring you more reports on Myanmar today. Fish dealers from Central Sampia Fish Market in Jimenai Township, Yangon region said the domestic fish market always goes well in the season of summer because people celebrate donation ceremonies and festivities. But this year, there has been a sharp decrease in the fish sale force with stable prices. Let's find out more in this report. Domestic fish market always goes well in the season of summer because people celebrate the donation ceremonies and festivities. But this year, there has been a sharp decrease in the fish sale force with the stable prices, said fish dealers from Central Sampiao Fish Market in Jiminai Township of Yangon region. The fisheries products from the central Sampia fish market are distributed to the markets from the respective markets in Yangon region and the upper and lower Myanmar. This fish market is the basic site of exporting fisheries products to foreign countries and it is also the market capable of generating foreign earnings. Uang Yutan, director of Sampia Goldfish Company of Central Sampia Fish Market said. <laughs> The situation of fish market is as usual. The prices do not rise, but the people coming to the market are shrinking. About 10 people came to the market formerly, but now 5 to 3 only. Now about 2 cold storage owners are buying the fish to store them at cold storage factories and it is intended for a sport. Now the most buying fish places are Mandalay and Pimana. We have a plan to sell if the sea going boat catches the fish. Now the COVID-19 is touching around the world and so we can't do export activities yet. We will resume our export operation only if the virus crisis totally comes to a halt. Our country has enough fish for local consumption now. Our country will be okay only if the virus crisis is over. The fish market went well this time last year, but we faced a little difficulty. There are about 100 workers in the fish trading center. Half of them are from countryside. This year, they can't go back during the Indian holidays, and so fish dealing entrepreneurs are arranging with them for food and accommodation. Uni Yukai, owner of Fish and Trading Center, Gonyi Fish and Trading Center, said. <laughs> Here we are selling the fish fair prices. We are distributing the fish to all parts of the country. One thing that is getting near. We have a lot of difficulty. We can do nothing as the COVID-19 virus is taking place across the world. My workers are working class people. If a lockdown is placed, it will be difficult for them in daily means. We will have to control as much as we can. State Council of Dong San Suji told not to shut down essential goods shops and markets. I don't know how it will happen. We pay always attention to what will happen. We have to deal with the margins. Our business can be done immediately. The margins have to take us for two or three days in advance if they buy the fish. I am also keeping in touch with the market situation. Under normal circumstances, our business is doing a brisk trade on account of those who are well prepared for Tianjin holidays. In the retail market, sales force is going down day by day. Doji Jinai, fishmonger of Miangji Market, said. I have quite a little time to sell fish, even one third is gone. We hardly get money for our meals. We can settle the debt yet. We earn less and less day by day. We earn 80,000 jets today, but the next day we earn 70,000 jets, and then 60,000 jets day after day. 
We had to experience such situation when the Nagis storm hit Myanmar in 2008. If we sell the fish, we don't see any difficulty. We have prepared for things and holidays as we take retirement. We come to buy the fish from the fish trading center and then we sell it back. We come to buy the fish as long as the fish trading center has not closed. If it is closed, we can't come. If we get money from selling the fish, we buy rice and edible oil. With the preventative measures against the COVID-19 in the country, those who are returning for Thinjin holidays will be kept into a 14-day quarantine in the respective regions and states. Most of the workers will be staying in Yangon under the arrangement of relevant employers despite the closure of the work sites. Major Mintlai, worker of Sambia Goldfish Company, said, The workers are allowed to return to their native places. The employers arrange with the workers for their food and stay. The boss has arranged an apartment for remaining workers to stay in. Consumer goods such as rice, edible wine and salt have been bought for us. Our holidays are the same as Tintian ones. I haven't returned to my village. I think everything will be all right. That's a report on the local fish market seeing a sharp decrease in sales, but the price stays the same. Well, let's move on to the last report before we go to international news. The Securities and Exchange Commission of Myanmar has permitted foreigners to trade on the Yangon Stock Exchange. The foreign shareholding ratio or limit is now available on YS Access website. This report covers the procedures and the opportunities for foreign investors interested in trading on the YSX. Agajo has more. The Securities and Exchange Commission of Myanmar, ACCM, permitted foreigners to trade on the Yangon Stock Exchange on March 20th. The announcement comes after the SCCM issued a July 2019 notification stating that foreign individuals and locally registered entities will be permitted to invest in up to 35% of the shares of the companies listed on the exchange. Uta Tong U, Yangon Stock Exchange Executive Senior Manager, gave details. <laughs> According to the notice issued by the Securities and Exchange Commission of Myanmar SECM, the foreign investors can now start trading on the Yangon Stock Exchange. The listing can be opened now. The central bank has also given instruction to the subsidiary banks on how to open accounts for the foreign investors. So, starting from 20th March, both the foreign individuals and institutions who live in Myanmar and those who are abroad can now start trading process when it comes to buying and selling of stocks of the companies listed on the Yangon Stock Exchange the foreign share holding ratio is uploaded on the YSX website we will supervise the trading so that it does not exceed the limit so if the foreigners are interested to trade on YSX there are six securities companies which are YSX trading participants they can open accounts at one of the six houses. Yangon Stock Exchange as a stock exchange is the venue to provide opportunities for investors to buy or sell listed company shares. Investors have to send their buying or selling orders to YSX through securities companies having securities license issued by SECM as well as trading qualification provided by Yangon Stock Exchange. After opening bank and securities accounts, an investor is able to send buying selling orders under following stock trading rules stipulated in the trading business regulations. To prevent too much volatility of stock prices, Yangon Stock Exchange sets daily price limit for all stocks of the listed companies. An upper and a lower limit price of the day is decided based on the level of base price under the table stipulated in the enforcement regulations for trading business regulations. Uta Tung continue to explain. 
Now the sixth company to get listed on YSX is from the logistics sector and with increasing and diverse sectors joining the market, not only foreign investors but also local investors will have more options to invest in. EFR, public company, the sixth company to get listed on the YSX, was supposed to officiate its listing on 20th of March. But due to the coronavirus impact, the listing event has been postponed to May as per government's instruction. We will announce when we will have the listing ceremony again. EFR, the sixth company to join the Yangon Stock Exchange, has generated 19 million shares with an investment of 13.6 billion jets. In 2016, shares of only three companies were traded on the Yangon Stock Exchange. First, Myanmar Investment FMI, Myanmar Thirwa Asusat Holdings, and Myanmar Citizens Bank. One more public company, First Private Bank, was listed on the Yangon Stock Exchange in 2017. In 2018, TMH Telecom Public Company Limited debuted on the exchange. More than 2.5 million shares of three listed companies were traded on the Yangon Stock Exchange in 2016, and their value was estimated at 70 billion jets. In 2017, despite an increase in the stock trading volume to 2.6 million shares, the trade value was only 22 billion jets. In 2018, 2.3 million shares of the five companies worth of 11.5 billion jets were traded on the exchange. A total of 2.4 million shares worth of 13.39 billion jets were traded on the Yangon Stock Exchange in 2019, which is a significant increase compared to the previous year. This is Aga Jo reporting for Myanmar International Radio. And that's all we have for today's reports. Let's check on some international news now. The World Health Organization on Monday said that it has been working closely with experts from the United States, especially after the coronavirus outbreak, and all the information has been open to every country from the beginning. Speaking at a virtual press conference from Geneva, WHO Director General Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus said that his organization and the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have a long history of cooperation and having CDC staff means there is nothing hiding from the U.S. from day one. According to him, 15 members of the CDC staff had been working with the organization on COVID-19 response since January 1st. Chinese President Xi Jinping, who's also the General Secretary of the Communist Party of China Central Committee, on Monday inspected northwest China's Shanxi province. Ecological preservation and poverty alleviation topped the agenda of the inspection, as China is recovering from the COVID-19 outbreak and is now seeking to recover its economy from a historic 6.8% drop in its gross domestic product in the first quarter. Xi's first stop is New Beiliang National Nature Reserve in the county of Zhansui, Shangluo City. He inspected the ecological preservation of the Qinling Mountains. In other news, over half of Japanese people do not agree with the epidemic response of the government of Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, according to a new survey. 53% of those surveyed said they disapproved of the current measures taken by the Japanese government to stem the COVID-19 pandemic. Meanwhile, 39% voiced their support for the work of the government. The poll was conducted by Japanese news outlet Mainichi Shimbun between April 18th and 19th and asked respondents for their opinions about a series of measures that include direct cash distribution, declaration of a nationwide state of emergency, and orders to close businesses. The U.S. has accused China of being responsible for the COVID-19 pandemic and said Beijing should face consequences. But a Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson has refuted the accusations and instead called for international cooperation. Shanghai 
。二零零八年发生在美国的金融动荡，雷曼兄弟公司破产，最终演变成全球的金融危机。有谁要求美国为此承担后果了吗？美国的一些人必须要清楚，他们的敌人是病毒，不是中国。New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern announced on Monday that the country will end its Level 4 lockdown at 11.59 p.m. on April 27th and then move into Level 3 for an initial period of two weeks. Ardern said that the cabinet considered lifting the lockdown on April 23rd but decided against it to lock in gains by the measures and have some additional certainty. According to Ardern, New Zealand has reported one of the lowest numbers of confirmed COVID-19 cases per 100,000 people in the world. The Prime Minister said the transmission rate of the virus, which is the number of cases one infected person can transmit to, is at 0.48 in the country, while the average is 2.5 overseas. Well, that's all we have for now. Thanks for joining me on Myanmar Today. I'm Henry Zin. Stay home, stay safe, help yourselves to help the world. I'll see you again. Goodbye.